My name is Zizarin, and I wanted to make a um, guide about a little bit about how to do the temples. A little bit of info about them and just like things I have found out so far and what people have posted on Reddit. So um, the temples are built by doing 11 incursions and that is the current name. That's what it's all about. So there are uh, incur- rip that guy. Um, there are incursions, one incursion in every single area. Uh, it starts at level, actually there's not one in the first zone, but like after, once you go into the Twilight Strand, there are incursions in every single league. So here you have Alva, which is the league mechanic. Now, once, once you talk to her, she gets excited, tells you about this temple thing. And then you can see here that it is, uh, all these rooms and you can see connections between them. So how this works is, uh, this is a tomb. So that is a neutral area. So things like tomb, antechamber, antechamber, whatever you call it. Passageways, banquet hall, those things, they're all like neutral rooms in cellar. So they're, they're rooms that don't do anything. In those rooms, in the bottom left and top right, both of them will change the room. So here in the bottom left changes it to hatch hatchery. And uh, in the top right, uh, it changes it to pools of restoration. What that means is if you kill the bottom left one, like there's a, there's a special unique monster and there's two in every area. Uh, that's how you choose which room to change it to. Um, so they're, they're like fairly tough in like higher maps. They can be, they can be pretty tanky and it can be hard to kill them. Uh, you have like a time limit once you go inside these. Um, and that is like uh, extended by killing monsters, very similar to the breach mechanic. Um, let's see. So um, once we've upgraded this, and actually I can show you, uh, I'll link this in the um, description as well. And this is like a cheat sheet made by Reddit. So it says here, um, what the, so for example, we can go find Pools of Restoration. This is the one we just got. That uh, fully upgrades to Sanctum of Vitality, and then the third level is Sanctum of Immortality. And it gives monsters regen per second. Now, that's a pretty bad side. It's actually one of the worst things to have in the temple, in my opinion, because you can make it really tanky unless you're one-shotting the monsters. Uh, especially, like, there's some very tanky rares in there, and they can be really hard to kill. Uh, the good thing about upgrading these really bad things is once you've upgraded it to the third level, one and two do nothing, by the way, uh, the third level will have a chest in it with valuable loot. And this is how you get, uh, if you've been browsing Reddit lately, you'll see people posting all these cool rares. For example, chests with 130 life and 12% life. And they have like, like level 12 item requirement and stuff if you do it early. So they can be pretty cool to get some like nice items like that. Uh, so I would recommend like experimenting a little bit with even upgrading the bad ones. There are other things like the trap room. Uh, that's actually really rippy. Upgrading that to level three makes the entire labyrinth very scary. Like more, more scary lab, uh, more scary than the actual labyrinth or labo laboratory with the Zyro in it. Uh, however, it drops really cool trap items. So, for example, I have a one-handed mace with ninety-eight percent increased trap damage, and, and that's that's pretty big on a one-hander. So, uh, and it's the same with um, other things. Like, for example, if you upgrade the hatchery. Which is another one we had as an option. The level 3 there is you start getting minion things. So I have another scepter with 90% increased minion damage. You can get some really cool things by upgrading uh, things. Um, as far as like the Omnitech thing. The Omnitech can be upgraded and made more dangerous. Now, I don't have any like actual evidence of this. But just anecdotal stuff. I feel like I've been getting more of the vials. Which is the unique item you need to upgrade... Uh, the new incursion uniques, you can like upgrade them similar to Prophecy. Um, I feel like I'm getting more of the vials when I upgrade the Omnitech with the other Flame, Lightning, Hatchery, stuff like that. Not 100% sure, it's just I haven't actually had a vial when I haven't upgraded it. I have not had a single one. But I know that some people have been, so take that with a pinch of salt. Still need to experiment with it, we're still very early into the league. Um, Armorous Workshop, really strong. In all of like the upgraded ones, like the weapon workshop, gem workshop, stuff like that, there's a pretty big chance that you get a diviner chest. Like you'll get like chests with rewards in them, um, and you start getting quite a few like uniques and things. So like I think the armor's workshop is one of my favorite to upgrade, especially in Soul Cell Fun. Every time I've had it at level three, I've had at least one Dapper Prodigy, which is uh, the divination card for a six thing item level hundred armor. 
very very cool uh the gem cutter once you upgrade it to level three you can uh, double corrupt a gem that means that we now have the ability to get for example a level 21 vol art uh quality isn't very important on art but still uh you can do that too you could technically get a 21 20 vol art so that's very cool uh, the storage room really strong it seems to do a combination of every other room so i love upgrading the storage room Jewelers Workshop as well, just a bunch of like jewels. You can get you can get searching eyes, Stygian vises, really strong stuff there as well. The vault, the loads Arcanist boxes, really nice currency. So rare study, I'd say this is the most powerful thing again, especially if you're solo cell fun. Um, never have it has it ever been this easy to sustain maps. You get so many, and you get lots of map drops through the entire temple. Um, Brian Rome is like the same as armors, just with weapons. Not a big fan of that, I usually don't upgrade that. Corruption Chamber, completely broken. It's gonna be everyone's most favorite room. It makes it, it's very risk reward because it does give you 10 min max. Um, upgrading it to level one or two does nothing. So a tip for this is if you if I, if I get it in the first like five or six rooms, I'll put in a Corruption Chamber. But if I, if I say I have uh, four incursions remaining and it, it gives me the option to make a Corruption Chamber, I'm like, no, I don't really want to get eight min max or six min max or whatever the level one is for no reward because just having it in the lab doesn't do anything except make it really rippy um but yeah you get to double corrupt an item uh which is insane like uh i've actually had nothing good yet but i've seen lots of other good corruptions i've been very unlucky and most of my items have been destroyed um royal meeting room actually puts a ziri the full ziri fight inside uh your temple so you you actually end up having to fight her and uh I should have posted a highlight of this. I actually did this very early in the league. Still a very scary fight. Um, it was minus max and turbo. So I ended up having to log out quite a lot. I was not ready for it. And uh, yeah, I didn't actually think it would be like that. So it's very scary. Shrine Empowerment. This is really good. Also something you want to try to get early if you can. Um, anything that it has a direct connection to, as in a door. And I'll teach you how to set up the doors properly after looking at the spreadsheet here gets uh, plus one tier so that means that you can focus on getting like um like it's not that important if you don't get others to level three something i'm kind of sad about i wish they would have a fourth level i think it would have been really cool if you managed to get for example um let's say like the the vault and a shrine of empowerment next to each other and they're both level three they would get a level four vault now that could be like something really special because so far, out of all the temples I've done, and I've done probably over 80 to 100 already, like I've been spamming them, and I've only had a Shrine Empowerment level 3 next to another level 3 zone once. So that could be like a really cool, like, oh my god, that's amazing moment. Not something I hope they'll even think about adding this league. Um, uh, workshop increases density and quanti quantity, or at least makes like more items drop. I don't feel like that's very big. I guess it does add up quite a bit on map drops because it is such a large zone. Like there's probably two or three thousand monsters in there. Uh, and as you see here, the guard gives you pack size. Explosive room can be really nice to have uh, one level of just to in case in case you don't manage to connect to uh, one zone. And you can what it does is it lets you blow up um, like a passageway between zones. So upgrading that to level three it gives you more explosive charges. Then to research that level one you just get a few splinters level two you get a full breach a level three you get three breaches so uh, lots of nice splinters to be on there sacrificial chamber uh so as far as i know level one is just like trust or tre uh, not trust or treasure um five for one but what is the one the uh, mysterious treasure thing where you sacrifice one unique and you get another one back level two is now i've heard some rumors that it gives you a higher chance to give the same base as the one you're putting in but at least level two lets you get cross league things so for example something that would only drop in nemesis head hunter or domination stuff like that you have a chance to get in the hall of offerings in apex of ascension it will give you the same base type back if you put in a like baited breath chain belt you will get a belt back it doesn't have to be the same base but it will be the same slot so for example if you put in a chain belt you can get a head hunter so uh that's also a very strong one so the main ones I've been trying to get is Corruption Chamber, uh, Sacrificial Chamber, like those two at level 3. Surveyor Study, especially if I'm doing like tier 10 maps and above. I don't really care that much if I'm doing 8s and below because that's fairly easy to sustain anyway. Um, I'd say I prioritize Storage Room or Revolt, surprisingly, because just Storage Room, like, 
Seems to drop really nice uniques quite a lot. Uh, the armor room as well, just for Dapper Prodigies. That's more of a self-found thing. Uh, I would probably prioritize Vault pretty hard, especially in Trade League. I don't really need all those tip cards that I can just buy anyway. So that's like, that's uh, most of these. A lot of the operating, the Omnitech, can be really scary. So the way the Omnitech works is you're in a very, very small room here. And um, it can be pretty rippy. So let's go ahead and actually enter an incursion here now. And I'm going to upgrade to a hatchery. Now the way this would work, if this was already a hatchery, always the top right is to upgrade. Top left, or sorry, bottom left is always going to be to change the current zone. And the top right is always going to be upgrade, as long as you have the ability to. So if it is uh, like we're, the one we're in currently, where... Um, where it's a neutral zone, then both will be to change. So you can see that the timer is going up here the more I kill. And uh, you're guaranteed one of those stones that you saw me pick up. Is a stone of passage? You're guaranteed one of those in every single zone. Now, the thing is that even if you have one monster remaining, it'll virtually look like that. Which led to a lot of confusion early on with saying, no, there's not one guaranteed. But GGG have even confirmed that it is one guaranteed. There's usually just sometimes a monster hiding. Um... You get a lot of loot, especially if you full clear, you can get a lot of uniques. I think it's also based on the timer. So, again, just not a fact, but still. Uh, I feel like it's based on the timer, because sometimes when you like kill everything really quickly and enter, I get like three to six uniques. Um, so, it, it does feel like it a little bit. Um, now you can see that like the red passageway I unlocked there, it connected hatchery and tunnel. So ideally, you want to make sure that every room is connected. Preferably in a way so you could like linearly clear it and not have much backtracking, but yeah Some builds like for example kinetic blast doesn't necessarily have the ability to actually kill the Omnitech. It can be pretty rippy uh, It's like this big machine at the end of the lab uh, sort of similar to the Azeria fight where you have like the um, It'll have like a half stage where it gets like there's monsters trying to like empower it They'll like walk towards it heal it stuff like that. So just kill them and uh, you do want fairly good single target to be able to kill it. So that was something I was skipping every single time when I was doing the um, la uh, temple on my kinetic blast build. Because I had very little single target. So I wouldn't even bother connecting the last room because there was no loss in me not doing it. So that means that like the important thing to take away from that is that regardless if you can actually kill the Omnitech, it's still worth doing. For example, Steel, who recently got the first level 100 in hardcore self and incursion was skipping the uh, boss the entire time so very worth doing just for map sustain and just general goodies if you can kill the boss that is pretty nice you can get several good things and there are upgrade jars the way the upgrade jars works is you need the level three um sacrifice chamber and once you have the level three sacrifice chamber you can sacrifice unique and the vial and i'll show you one of these now and uh, then it'll give you the upgraded version. There is another thing you can do as well. Is you can corrupt these. I'm pretty sure it's these. I I'm going to test it. But from uh, from what I was told you can um, put these into the uh, sacrifice chamber. And you have a chance of getting a really cool six things. So, oh no that's in the corruption chamber. Sorry so it's level 3 corruption chamber not sacrifice. Uh, sounds pretty cool. I want to test that out. It does look like a pretty cool unique. I can't actually remember the name of it right now. Um... I want to show you guys the vials they're here so here you can see for example sacrifice this item on the altar of sacrifice along with the architect's hand to transform it um so here is the mask of the spirit drinker uh which i think summoning i don't think i have the one to upgrade that but basically it's just one of the uniques that's with the patch and content and uh, you can upgrade it to a stronger or, or a different version uh, and then you have like these as well, which I'm very hyped about upgrading. The upgraded one lets you completely bypass the um, the Val like cooldown mechanic. So that's definitely something I want to experiment with. Cool. That is pretty much all I've learned about this so far. I just wanted to try to get a video about all this early. Hopefully it helps you guys and explains some of it. A pretty cool league. If you are, haven't checked it out already, I definitely encourage you to. The, uh, a lot of people saying it's their favorite league already and it's definitely a lot of fun. As for leveling, I've been mostly skipping them. 
It's really useful on your first character. They do drop a lot of loot, a lot of rares, which can make progression a lot easier. But once you have like leveling gear, gold rims and stuff like that, and you, I would probably skip them until um, at least Blood Aqueduct where you can farm tabby this. They do drop like the divination cards and stuff from the zone. I can't confirm that. I did get humility cards from doing these. Very rarely. Div cards seem to have been kind of shafted. I get so much drops, so many uniques, very few div cards. Um, so I don't end up doing loads of them when I am leveling new characters in Blood Aqueduct. Like if, if you've played leagues like Abyss or Breach, uh, it was a lot easier to farm humilities with those mechanics than it has been with the current incursion mechanics. So that seems to be just div cards that just didn't get a big drop rate buff. But everything else has been pretty good. So hopefully this guides help you and you can come ask questions or share things that you've learned either in the comments down below or on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do.